I get slipped away like a moment of time. But you were never mine. To live for the hope of it all. Cancel plans. Just to go to the mall. In, ca- <laughs> in case he calls. In case he calls. Cancel pl- your plans with your friends in Cancel case he calls. Cancel your plans in case he calls. Sing it for me. How does it go? Cancel plans just in case he calls. Meet me behind the bar. Something like that. Because you were my summer love. Because you were my summer love. Ramble. Pretty basic. Thank you to DoorDash, Rosetta Stone, and Rakuten for sponsoring this episode of Pretty Basic. Hey guys, what's up? And welcome back to Pretty Basic. I am your co-host, Alicia Marie. And I'm your co-host, Remy Cruz. I love that straw we have going on over there. Thank you. You guys should watch the YouTube video because I am drinking my Celsius out of a straw, a big, fun, crazy straw. A very basic straw. That smells basic. And I bought these for our launch party in 2018 and I found it in the cabinet. I don't even know what we have in the cabinets here. We have a pretty in pink and then we have a basic in blue and I'm using it to drink my drink today. Wait, you didn't get me a pretty one for my drink? You didn't ask for one. So. I didn't. Mm-mm. Mm-hmm. You wouldn't even do it. I don't say I wouldn't do it. Would you do it? Yes. Mm. I mean, we don't. It's so cheeky. <laughs> like, like it's like it's giving the live, laugh, love. No, this is so like 2014 bid day sorority girl. Mm. Like um, in the video, we're all like cheering, like the colored smoke bombs. DIY photo Mylar, booth. Mylar, the big balloons. Yeah, yeah. yeah, DIY photo booth with like a chain smoker song playing in the background. Oh or a Fifth Harmony. No, no. It, it was always an EDM song. Oh, you're right. Sorry, I was thinking something Talk like down. like that. Oh, uh, uh, actually, <laughs> that's pretty yeah, good. Lately, we got no place to go. Yes, that was a big one too. Lately, I've been um, finding the uh, pff, not the straw, straw almost, almost broke. <laughs> no, 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 and fell everywhere. Sorry, <laughs> almost spilling your drink. I'll just um, here. Basic. Um, I've filmed a few TikToks and reels about like old YouTube. And when I tell you they've gone so fucking viral, I mean, I know I've tagged you in some, but it's just funny. <laughs> I have seen them, yeah. <laughs> They're funny, but it's just funny because we didn't realize how many people watched then. So now when you put those things out, everyone's like, oh my God, yeah. like this was the time. It's so funny because YouTube was so niche at the time. Like I... I, I had very truly what I'm thinking of like that time was when I was in college and I was in my sorority and like everyone knew what I did, but I know like not when I went to school, like not many people like were aware of it yeah. before I like made it a thing that Same. I was like, I'm a YouTuber. Um, so it's just so funny thinking about how like how many people had that universal experience when they're liking your TikTok? Yeah. Because it like brings everyone out. It's like, oh my God. My favorite where were you? one was there was this girl and I, oh my God, I'm going to try to find her handle. I forget it was, but she was, she did the Trisha Paytas audio that was like, oh my God, oh my God, I'm so glad someone made a fucking video about this. And <gasps> it was like me at the ripe age of nine watching Alicia's college hacks. For, and yes. I was like, oh my, I was crying. It went so fucking viral. I saw that. But like that people, you changed lives with those DIYs. At the ripe age of nine. Like that was such good. It was like, no, no. You know what it was? It was like you doing like high school, back to school, like locker videos mm-hmm. or something like that. And the girl was like me at nine. Look, she doesn't have a locker when yeah. she's nine. Yeah. That was so funny. Oh my me God. Me telling the joke to everyone. Me mansplaining the joke. No, yeah, you did mansplain <laughs> the joke. Which funny is because I, 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 I thought that went without saying it. Right. Like, nine in college. Just my fine. bad. No, we're good. We're good. We're good. Well, thanks so much for being here, guys. Honestly, I have been obsessed with Pretty Basic lately in a good way not like about us I've just been excited to come and record I as well love this podcast it's so much fun so you're not excited to come record I am very excited to come record <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm but kidding. I have been going through it the past couple weeks no honestly we can get serious for a second I've been worried about you thank you and I'm not gonna cry in this episode I don't done. know why like the lights come on and I just want to cry <laughs> well they're bright <laughs> maybe is that what it is sensitive you know? oh my god I just like want to cry no seriously I was even telling a friend yesterday I was like yeah Rem's just been because they asked about you and I was like honestly she's good but she's just been going through it and it's so weird because I feel like we all know someone in our life or you've experienced it where it's like it's not just one bad thing happens it's like one thing after another after another and you think it can't get worse and it just keeps getting worse mm-hmm. and Ollie and I were even talking we were just like oh like I feel so bad for Rem. Like, how can we be there for her extra right now? Just like, seriously, 
that, like I just feel like everything you're going through is like just not normal to have so much things one after another. It's not another. normal, right? And then to, okay, good. No, this literally, makes me feel and also, if you're noticing, she has she has extensions in right now, and I joked this morning, being like. Bitch, what if it's because you cut your hair? <laughs> Honestly, I didn't even cut them. I just took the extensions out. And let me tell you, once you brought that up, I'm going tomorrow to put them back in. <laughs> They're clipped into my head right now because we just did a photo shoot. But um, thank you. I appreciate it. I've I've been going through a lot. And I wanted to treat this episode as like a therapy session because there's been a lot. Hap- I'm not crying, I promise yet. Give me a little bit. But there has been a lot going on in my life. And since we recorded last, there have been so many advancements mm-hmm. and also so many more bad things that went on this month of July, which we are now in August and I am so fucking happy. <laughs> you don't even know because I'm like, I'm a lightly superstitious person, but also just like, I don't know. July was like quite possibly one of the worst months of my life. And I talked about it a little bit here, but since the last time we recorded, there have been so many things that have happened. So I thought we could just sit and catch up and I could just tell you all my trauma right now. This is your, how are you really episode? I would love that honestly, because I do just need to talk about it. Also, I think it's so good for you from the outside looking in, obviously I'm your best friend. So I see more of the inside, but from the outside looking in, like you just seem so happy all the time. Like you're just it's in such good spirits, which like you really are all the time. But I know even like the last episode or what, last episode or the one before people were like, Rem, thank you so much for being vulnerable about when you opened oh, up. Oh, they about, liked it? Yes, they, they oh. were like so happy that you were saying how it's scary to get older. And like, that is a vulnerable oh, thing yes. to say. And like you opening, they're like, Rem, thanks so much for opening up. We know you don't like normally as much. And like, oh my God. like so even though, again, we've established that other people have things that are worse, but that still takes nothing away of what you're going through. Yeah. And even little things, can still be like monumental and big. So I want to dig into you. Okay. I wanted to be a psych major. So Um, this is my moment. Please. I mean, you can ask any questions you'd like. I do think I'm on the verge of a mentee B. I really do. Mm -hmm. Uh, Solely because, especially when I go into everything that's going on right now, I think people are going to hear and be like, holy shit. But for me, I feel like because granted, this was all in the span of two and a half weeks. Like literally since we recorded last, all of this has happened other than my dog passing away, which I've talked about already. But literally in two and a half weeks, all of this has happened. And for me, it literally felt like the TikTok sound where it's like another one. Thank you. (laughs) Another one. Thank you. In a way where I like I'm laughing at it because it's what else can I do? I can cry no, or I, I can laugh and I've already cried. So I might as well laugh. But you know how there's that period when you start delusionally laughing and you're like, Oh my God, it can't get worse. Yeah. I feel like you've already had that moment. And now it's just like, shit, dude. Yeah. Like, like that's how I was, just, oh, I don't know. I feel like that's how I felt. I got, you? I remember, and this was like three of like the six events into it. I remember getting home and feeling like, Oh my God, I, I can't, I can't do anymore. Like I can't do anymore. And then the next day something else happened and I had to laugh Mm -hmm. because I could do more, I guess I could do it. And I don't know, all of this is also kind of making me like turn back to religion in a little sense of a way, which I'll get into later. Let me go. She got so excited. No, I'm, I had, sorry. I was going to tell you something earlier today that kind of goes with that. So really? Yeah. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll, let me lay out everything that's happened in the past two and a half weeks of my life, okay. literally since the last time we recorded and then I'll go into everything else. But basically, uh, in, if you guys watched a couple episodes back, uh, I talked about how my childhood dog passed away, which hit me more than I thought it would. Like I haven't lived in my parents' house for a decade now. And I have, I see my dog or I would see my dog. Her name was Lila, uh, you know, here and there. But once I moved away, I didn't see her as frequently, but it's, I just didn't think it would hit me as hard because I don't go home very frequently Yeah, and I don't, I didn't see her very frequently in the past decade, like maybe like a few times a year, but it hit me hard and it's like such an emotional roller coaster. And this is like one of the first times I'm dealing with grief in my life. And a dog obviously is a dog, but also a dog does feel like family yeah. in a sense. So that was like kind of hard. And that was the first thing I was like, oh, this sucks, but I've been trying very much to look on the bright side of all these situations. And I think that's what's keeping me sane. I do think I'm gonna break soon though. So that happened obviously, and I've been really sad and like my family's been dealing with that. And then I talked about also a couple episodes back how I had just come straight from my brother's house because he had gotten surgery. He had botched surgery where they like messed up. He had to get surgery twice in a day on his back. And we were waiting for results from that. 
And then since that episode, uh, my brother found out that he has cancer. And, um, uh, it's okay. Hmm. <laughs> I don't want to cry. No, it's okay. He's okay, though. And he told me I could talk about it. Um, hmm. Thank you. Damn. Really thought. I told it to my vlog yesterday, and I was smiling. <laughs> no, Remy, that's what I'm saying. Like, I think this is so good for you to, like, process everything. I think yeah. you are so good at being happy for everyone and being strong for everyone and being like no it's fine it's okay and it's like it's okay for it not to for it not to feel okay or to be scared thank you it's okay though he's okay <laughs> he's gonna be okay and like again i'm trying to look on the bright side of everything but obviously like getting that text was really scary and he has a new baby and all these sorts of things but he um i won't go too into detail because like i don't think anyone cares that much about it but he uh, has sarcoma which Obviously, cancer fucking sucks, and nobody wants to hear that about their family, especially like my baby brother. But because of where it is on his back, from the very little research I've done, because I don't want to go WebMD things, um, sarcoma is often found in the spine or in the leg. And if it's in the spine, it's a much better case because uh, they can basically like remove it, do radiation. And like, most likely, like they basically said like, you're gonna be okay to Shane. So he's okay, but just hearing that is really shitty. Oftentimes if it's found in the leg though, they have to amputate. So that's obviously really scary. So already on the bright side where my family's being like, you know, it could have been so much worse. Like we're, I'm happy that he's gonna be okay. He's gonna do treatment. I just feel like that poor kid has like, when it rains, it pours with him all the time. So that's also mm -hmm. obviously been very hard. I know he's going to be okay. Like the doctors have said it. He has, they have a treatment plan already in place. I think I just like so badly want to be able to take that away from him. He's a new dad. He has a, an infant and a new wife and all these things. It's just like really stressful. And again, he said, I could talk about this and he's in such high spirits. I was like freaking out and I was like, are you okay? Like, what can I do? And he was like, honestly, I'm like, I'm okay. He was most upset that he just recovered from the last surgery and then has to go in for new surgery. He's like, surgery. I just got better. <laughs> so like that made me feel in higher spirits about it, but obviously it's just a shitty situation. So that literally happened last week. And then a few days ago, I was in the garage and I went to go open the cabinet. If anybody is listening to this, please go support me because <laughs> I was walking down. I had like a busy work day. I had like some meetings in the morning and then I had a bunch of things I needed to get done that I needed to catch up on because I had just things to do. And one of which was I am sponsored by Fabletics, love them. And I needed to take my static photo for my Instagram. So I put on this really cute outfit, <laughs> lavender top. So when you just posted. Lavender <laughs> leggings. Yes. So if you're listening, please go, go uh, like it. Give it a like. Maybe like leave, leave me a cute little purple heart emoji yes. just in solidarity with what happened. So I was walking down the stairs and I was look and I had this mirror <laughs> that you can like see yourself in when you're walking down the stairs. And I was looking at my outfit and I was like, I look so cute. Oh my God, I have a matching purple leash for Daisy to wear in my photo. I know which one you're talking yes. about. Yes, and so I was like, oh, it's in the garage. I know exactly where it is. I had just finished cleaning out the, there is like a closet that Cal and I have that we did not touch for three years since we moved into the house that we just like <laughs> shoved things in. The way that I found earthquake kits way in the back. No, I was like, like I could have gotten to that. Any friends, fans, she has a Monica closet. Is that what it is? Yeah. Okay, well it's that. <laughs> and so I, we finally went through it and I found so many things. I found like literally the earthquake kit in the back of the closet that was behind 17 boxes, like could have never gone to that in an earthquake. Uh, so we like cleared it all out and I got a bunch of stuff to donate. I put a bunch of stuff in storage. And then I found like a bin with like paint cans that were from the house, like to paint paint over things if there was an issue. And I asked Cal, I was like, can you put this in the garage, please? And he's like, yeah, and he ran it outside. Didn't think anything of it. The next day, I think, oh, you know, we'll complete this look, this purple harness and purple leash from Wild One, sponsor me. And I go out to the garage and I open the cabinet to grab it. And I'm so excited because I have this adorable vision for this photo. And all of a sudden I hear like something clang really fast. And then boom, I, like the room is spinning. I'm like, I almost pass out. I'm like, I literally am just screaming. I'm, again, I'm screaming, Cal, Cal, which is always my first reflex for some reason in a, in a disaster. I should not laugh at this. I just pictured from his point of view, cause you normally yell, Cal, 
Oh, yeah. he probably thought it was. A- he's like, lunch is ready. <laughs> yeah. There's someone at the door. Yeah. He because he, he didn't actually up. come down for a while, yeah. so he probably thought he's like, she's fine. I was like screaming, and basically, oh, no. Cal had put the paint cans above the the cabinets. Uh, it was like a big box filled with three paint cans and paint supplies. And paint cans are heavy, if we didn't know. So it all came crashing down on my head. I kid you not, I felt my neck crunch Mm. more than my head I was worried about my neck Mm -hmm. because I literally felt like and I've already been in like some bad car accidents where like I've had whiplash I've had I've dealt with neck issues like since college when I got in my first accident never my fault somehow I'm caught in these situations and I felt like my neck like bend which obviously you don't want your neck to bend yeah and so I all I remember is Wit and Ollie ran into the garage and I was like just trying to understand what just happened. Cause again, like I was about to pass out and they each grabbed an arm from me and they're like, follow, like we need to go inside. We need to go inside. So they walk me inside and sit me on the couch. And I was just like, what happened? What just happened? And they're like, are you okay? And Wit's like running to get me water and she's getting me ice. And Ollie's just like freaking out thinking I'm going to (laughs) die. And then Cal comes running down. Also, my assistant, Brooke, was out of the house at this time. So Cal comes running down. He's like, what happened? What happened? And I was so mad. I was so mad about the paint being above the cabinet. I was like, Ugh. the cabinet, like the paint, the paint. And he was like, oh, my God. And like, I could tell he felt so badly, oh. obviously. And so we're all sitting there. And I kid you not, in my head, I was like, I'm going to die. I truly was like, I am. I I like was thinking all this as they're all freaking out, like looking at me, being like, we need to go to the hospital. We need to go to the hospital. And I was like. You know, when you're like talking to your friend, you're like, oh, I heard about this girl one time that like opened the cabinet and a paint fell on her head and she died. Mm -hmm. I was like, I cannot go this way. I was so upset that if this is the way I was going to die, like this is not how I saw it for myself. (laughs) So I was so upset about that. And uh, we ended up deciding like it's, we need to go to the hospital because- Was the room physically spinning? Yeah. I just felt so like, I've never felt this way before. Like my, I felt like my head was empty. And that was just like, the room was spinning. It, I, like, I understood what happened, but it was just like in the moment, I was like, what happened? And it fell directly on top of my head, which I already knew. Obviously head injuries are nothing to, yeah. to, to, to joke take about light. or to, to take lightly. And I know like, it's really bad. Obviously the front and the back of the head are the most important. So I knew like the top of my head wasn't great, but I was like, if it were to fall on something, at least it was oh, the I top. Also it fell from like 10 feet above. So like it, it fell with like, Gravity. gravity so um yeah I, I was like let's go to the hospital like I want to get checked for sure and everybody was so great and as I was like getting ready to go and Cal was like walking me upstairs to like change I called my mom I started like crying have to give a shout out see I keep just like laughing in these situations and making jokes no no, no it's fine <laughs> I will sorry. tell you it took me like a year and a half of being your friend to like real I'm like okay this is this is just like she just copes with, with laughing. It. yeah <laughs> I'm like the most unserious bitch in the world but it's truly like how I keep myself from having a mental breakdown but I'm realizing that now mm-hmm. yeah the L'Oreal Lash Paradise Waterproof Mascara really <gasps> held up my crying um, I went in full glam to the I was so mad too because I just did my makeup <laughs> and then this happened I was like I got so ready to film and now I have to go to the hospital. <laughs> and so um, my assistant walks in, she's like, and we're all sitting in that front room that no one sits in and we're all like huddled, they're huddled around me. And she's like, what happened? And I was like, Brooke, <laughs> oh. <laughs> she has to go to the ER, blah, blah, blah. And so Cal got me in the car. I grabbed the vlog camera. I was like, I got to update the viewers. I just left off with my office and yeah. now they're not going to know what happened. Yeah. <laughs> Hey guys, uh, Schoolisha is back in session and you know what the best back to school life hack is in the entire world? Um, It's something that is super easy you can do from your house and it's gonna make your back to school shopping a breeze. It's going back to school shopping with DoorDash. With DoorDash, you'll enjoy next level convenience with delivery in the hour, making it easier than ever to get your back to school needs fast. I don't know about you guys, but I remember going back to school shopping when I was a kid. And while it was fun, it was pure chaos. There were things thrown everywhere. So many kids running around, just hard to get exactly what you want. And with DoorDash, they make it so much easier. Whether you need to fill your backpack up or you need to fill your lunchbox up, you guys, you can seriously get anything and everything from DoorDash. Also moms or dads, or if any parents are listening and you want to be prepped for the new school year, you can be prepared before the big day arrives. Stock up with on-the-go breakfast, lunchbox staples, and the brands that all your kids love. Shop DoorDash to get everything you need for the back-to-school season delivered right to your door. 
Order now for stress-free back-to-school shopping. Use promo code BASIC2023 to get 50% off up to a $10 value when you spend $15 or more at convenience, grocery, or retail stores on DoorDash. That's 50% off up to a $10 value when you spend $15 or more. Promo code BASIC2023. Don't forget, that's code BASIC2023 for 50% off your next order. Terms apply. So I don't know if you guys know this, but Alicia and I are actually heading over to Korea very soon, which I am so excited about because I haven't been since I was a kid. Yeah, have you ever I've been? I've never <gasps> been. I'm so excited. I can't wait to to just tap into my personal culture and, and experience that with my best friend and just everybody. And I'm so excited. And Rosetta Stone is the perfect thing to have and to use before we head on our big trip because I've taught you a few Korean words. Mm -hmm. I mean, I wish I could learn so many more and I can with Rosetta Stone and then I can teach you. Annyeong. (gasps) Annyeong haseyo. Good job. I try. So for me personally, I would love to learn Korean because I would love to know more words for when we go to Korea. I would also love to be able to communicate with my grandma better. If you guys are in the same boat or just genuinely want to learn a new language, then Rosetta Stone is for you. They are the most trusted language learning program and they're available on desktop or as an app and it truly immerses you in the language that you want to learn. They're the trusted expert for 30 years with millions of users and 25 languages offered. They have everything from Spanish to French, Italian, German, Korean, Chinese, Japanese, Dutch, Arabic, and Polish, and so many more. Um, They also have fast language acquisition. So basically Rosetta Stone immerses you in many ways. No like English translations. You really learn how to speak and you learn how to think in that language, which makes it so much easier as well as you will be able to sustain it for much longer and hopefully the rest of your life. Also, there is a speech recognition that has the built-in true accent feature and it gives you feedback on your pronunciation. And it's an amazing value. You can get a lifetime membership that has all 25 languages for any and all trips and languages needed in life. It's normally a $299 program, but with our code, you can get it for just $149. Don't put off learning that language. There's no better time than right now to get started. For a very limited time, our listeners can get Rosetta Stone's lifetime membership for 50% off. That's $149 for unlimited access to 25 language courses courses for the rest of your life. Redeem your 50% off at rosettastone.com slash basic today. I knew I was okay. I obviously I was a little bit worried, but I was like, I know I'm going to be okay, but just for safety, like it's good to go. Yeah. And I felt okay. I was like, my head felt okay. It was just a little red. My neck started, it was like going also, in waves. You know how when you get in an accident, you feel fine. It's just because adrenaline kicks yes. in. So you don't know what's actually wrong. Yes. I'm so glad you went, honestly. I am too. And I would have, there was no, I knew in my head, I was like, there's no way I'm not going to the ER right now. Um, or just to get it looked at because I always think of the tragic accident that happened to the mom and the parent trap yes yes I think of her she was if you didn't know uh she was skiing fell thought she was okay and she had internal bleeding from just just falling yeah she like hit a tree I think oh was it a tree Mm -hmm. oh I always thought she just fell regardless like heads aren't something to not joke around with even though I was joking but please know that was a coping mechanism (laughs) and so uh I went to the ER and um Yeah, it was like the pain was going in waves. I knew I probably had a concussion because um, the light was really sensitive. Uh, My neck was hurting and then it would go away and then my head would hurt and then it would go away. Um, And then once I got to the ER, they said it was like a two hour wait to get in. So I just sat there and I waited, got some work stuff done. And then the nausea hit me like Mm -hmm. crazy. I've never had a concussion before. Mm -hmm. The nausea hit me like crazy. And I was like, oh, I'm not good. And then I was fine. After like 15 minutes of that, it was just like a weird little like roller coaster. And then we eventually got in to see the doctor and I got a CT scan. It was like, I ended up being there for like six full hours from start to finish. All the staff were so incredibly nice and very comforting. And Cal was like, Cal was so worried about me. He was more worried about me than I was worried about myself. So I was like trying to keep the mood light, (laughs) playing patty cakes, making TikToks. I was like, it's okay. Like he would literally just sit there and stare because I think he felt so badly. He felt so, I was like- Ashley would feel the same way and they're so similar. It's okay, it happened. Yeah, yeah. After I got through the initial shock, I was like, it's no one's fault. This was the epitome of a freak accident. Mm -hmm. And so I got the CT scan, never had one of those. That was crazy. And then- they brought me back to the room. We had to wait like another hour for the results. And then finally the doctor came in and he was like, okay, so we got your scan back and you're okay to go home. And I was like scared. Everyone was like, don't sleep, don't sleep. Like you can't sleep. So I was freaking out. I didn't want to freak you out. 
Yeah. I almost text that and I was like, I don't want to freak her out. Like, obviously the doctors are going to tell her what to tell her. It's fine. 17 people told me to not sleep. I was taking selfies. Oh, I didn't even say this. I got in and again, I was like, my pain was going in waves, but they asked me like, what are some of your symptoms that you were having? I was like, I've been a little nauseous. I had some neck pain. I had some head pain, but like I'm doing okay. And then they bring out this neck brace, like this insane Regina George adjacent neck <laughs> brace. And they strap me in and it's like literally like I can't swallow properly. I couldn't breathe properly because it was so tight on my neck. And I thought that it was just for the CT scan. I thought it was like a part of it. So I was waiting, 20 minutes go by, 30 minutes, an hour, an hour and a half. And finally I was like, hey, Cal, can you ask them like when the scan's gonna happen? So he went out and asked and they were like, oh, her scan's coming up. They're like very backed up, but she needs to keep that brace on the entire time because she said her neck hurts. And I was like, but it was hurting, but not enough for this brace. And I like literally couldn't, I couldn't move. I couldn't breathe, but obviously it was for safety. So I got the scan and the doctor came in and was like, hey, you're cleared to go for the night, but check your portal tomorrow because we're gonna run more tests overnight. And, um, mm, don't cry, bitch. Don't cry. Um, check in the, check in the morning or check over the weekend. Mm. It's so funny. Cause I sound like I've been pain the whole time. Like when I'm crying versus you are like, you're such a pretty crier. Oh my, I think I'm the ugliest. Cry- I think you're such a no, beautiful you crier. You are such a prettier crier. No. I'm all snotty. I'm I live like, 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 I'm literally like, I'm, like, like, I'm, like, I'm not kidding. I'm a fucking pig. Well, <laughs> a cute pig. Thank so, you. um, the doctor said, check the portal. We're going to run some more tests, but they won't, you won't get the results until later. But uh, you're good to, for the night. I was like, I can sleep. I'm okay. He was like, you're totally good. You I thought I was going to die sleep that in night? my sleep. I thought I was going to die in my sleep. Yeah. I was okay. But knowing that the doctor said I was cleared, it, it yeah. gave me peace of mind. Um, I went to bed. That was Thursday night. And then Friday went by. I had, oh my God, I woke up and I was so nauseous. But a lot of people told me like it hits you the next day. My neck hurt a bit. My head hurt a bit. But again, I was like, overall, it was just a mild concussion. Like mm-hmm. it could have been so much worse. Again, looking on the bright side it could have been so much worse. I'm okay. But it still didn't hurt when it hit it you. Did, it did. <laughs> it was just more like, sh- yeah, like, like sh- jarring like, and yeah. shocking. And I, I didn't know this. Well, I didn't know. Cause, uh, obviously we left in such a haste that uh, Brooke and Ollie stayed back. And then eventually I felt so bad because it took so much longer than I was expecting. I was like, you guys can go home. Ollie was like, no, I'm staying. And he was worried about the dogs. He was worried about me. He stayed the entire time waiting for me to come home. And little did I know he cried on the couch the whole night because he thought something like bad was going to happen to me. He, like, like, he's so cute. He's so fucking cute. I had no idea he cried on no, the couch. No, I didn't know he can cry. He can cry. <laughs> he can emote. His face can move. Like the, Also, I felt so bad because I was with Mia editing and he had texted me being like, hey, well, actually, rewind a little bit. You're mm-hmm. going to find this hilarious. So I thought it was a prank. <laughs> <gasps> because I, I was like this it's is, just is so crazy that it, it happened so, too I'm not kidding I randomly get a text in our group chat with you and Ollie's like oh my god Alicia Remy's hurt and I was like Ollie hurt. told <laughs> Ollie alerted the presses yes the oh. presses alerted the press he told every every group chat I was in I was like Ollie <laughs> no no which like I loved because no, he wanted everyone to I know. was I was like wait like actually and then he was like yes it's so bad but then you didn't answer and I was like are they filming a bit? Oh, like, <laughs> just know I'll never, I'll never joke about no, that to no, someone no, no. else. Good to know. But for, for a split. And then I tried calling you you didn't answer. So I was like, are they trying to like prank me or something? Cause no one's answering me, <laughs> yeah. but I just, I called both of them and no one's answered. And then like, and then the, as more time went on and you actually finally answered, I was like, Oh my God, sure. <laughs> like, I was like, Oh my God. Why did I even think that was a prank? Like, so, ha, guys. So I was like, ah, okay. Like I'm trying to call you. No one's answering. Like it can't be that serious. Meanwhile, Me on the ground. You're, meanwhile, you're literally on the fucking ground. I was like, can I help? And then I tried to make a joke, making it like light as we do. Cause we took oh, that way. Funny. No, but only Ollie was like, he was like jail for that comment. And then you didn't reply. And I was like, oh my God, did I actually offend that? I was like, oh, holy fuck, Alicia, why'd you say that? And then I was like, no, no, I was just trying to make light of the situation. And then, and then, and then no one replied again. So I was like, you do you need me to come to the hospital? <laughs> I was like, what is happening? I was just not on my phone. Cause I was literally no. in the ER. So don't, no, I was no, no, literally, no. I thought it was a hilarious no, joke. It was funny <laughs> because once anyway, so that was just my like train of thought. But then I was like, holy shit. I was like, well, okay, well realistically it's probably like a mild one, but also like 
there's nothing I could do at the hospital, but like, let me know if you guys need anything. And you're like, Oh my God, no, you're fine. So it just, it was just funny because all, while all that's happening, all that chaos, I'm just editing with Mia. Like, Oh <laughs> Oh, yeah, they won't answer my call. Like, okay, well, it must be a prank. Like, whatever. Um, but he did text me, and he was like, what are you doing? And I was like, well, I'm editing with Mia. And he was like, okay. And I'm like, why did it? Because when I found out he was crying at home, I was oh, like, baby. why didn't you call me? He was like, you were busy. And I was like, I would have left. Like, I would have been like, hey, I'm so sorry. Like, she would have understood. She could have gone with. She yeah. could have gone with. Um, oh, that's so sweet. So he, I just pictured him, like, in your house by himself. It's so sad. No, it, like, it meant the world. Like, even you offering to come to the hospital, like, him staying back, and, like, me being like, please go home. It's going to be another, like, three hours i'm not leaving like just that kind of stuff like that's when like those are ride or dies yeah um so that was the 27th so they discharged you saying they said go home a mild concussion you have a mild concussion and they said like you can't you can't see a concussion on any test you were at ever take he was like if but if you have like symptoms internal bleeding yeah yeah so like not internal bleeding that's like a whole other thing no, concussion no. is just your brain Shakes. yeah yeah but but bleeding from like a mild concussion Versus like a severe concussion where there is that, right? I don't, I think a concussion, I think concussion in general, they can't tell. I think internal Got bleeding it. is like a whole so other thing. So that's why sure. I, f I was filming a TikTok of like five things, the past five things I Googled and one was a concussion. And I was like, oh, well, so I'm sure Remy's going to tell you guys this, but she got a concussion. So then I was just making sure I was like, right. Cause I was like, I know it's when you're, when it shakes and it hits the skull, but I was like, yeah, I, but I don't think it means it, it always bruises or whatever, like whatever. Anyways. I mean, they didn't tell me much. He just said, you have a mild concussion. Like okay. you'll be okay. He said to really just be careful to not hit my head for the next like, few days, because if it happens twice, like it could be much worse. So that happens a lot, especially with like football players. Cause I think yes, Terrence brother brought that up too. a lot yeah, to me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, that's why I was like, cause Ollie was like scared. I was like, Oh no, like she'll be okay. I, like it's very common. Yeah. But I get how it's also like, I can only imagine how heavy the actual box was. I like, I, I knew I was okay. I knew like I felt fine. I could speak properly. I was like cracking jokes, but I knew also just for peace of mind, like there could be something wrong, most likely not, but like I'll get it checked out. And so that was the 27th, 28th. I like really chilled at home and was nauseous. That was like the worst of it all. And then the next day was Cal and my four year anniversary. And we were so excited because we like planned all these things. We like, I've been looking forward to this for like four years, <laughs> four fucking years. <laughs> but like for these plans for like months now, I've been so excited. We had like a full day planned. I was really stoked. We got, got each other like really cute gifts and just like, it was really, I was so looking forward to it, but he was very adamant. He was like, we can do, we can remake those plans anytime. Yeah. Like, I don't want you to like, go, I don't want you to go outside. I just like, I want you to be safe. So I was like, okay, it's all good. That was Saturday. Sunday comes around and I am winding down my day. I caught up on all my work stuff because obviously concussed put me back a bit. And I was going through my email and I saw I had an email from my doctor and I was like, oh shit. Okay. Like I'm sure the results are in. And I look at the results and I click like the CT scan of my spine that they did and everything was clear. Everything. I think they said like unremarkable, which I am remarkable, but it's fine. <laughs> I am remarkable, but it was But my spine is unremarkable and that's fine. So everything was fine there. And then I click the head scan and I'm reading it and I get to this one line and I keep like rereading it over and over and over again. And I'm like, wait, Ooh, what? <laughs> and they found a cyst in my brain. And obviously I like freak the fuck out. I'm like rereading it over and over again. I start like, I like heart rate starts raising. So I'm like, oh my God, what is going on? And I immediately call Ollie, which probably was like not the best person to call <laughs> considering that we are not best in these situations. And he's just like, obviously he starts freaking out with me. I call my mom who was a nurse, any like health thing. I'm always like, mom, in general, I'm like, mom, but with my health stuff, I'm always like, what's going on? Um, and so I started researching it and they found a cyst in my pineal gland. And obviously just like hearing something in your brain, like makes you really scared. And like, I was absolutely freaking the fuck out. And then I started researching, but then I started researching too much that made me like start to spiral. I called Cal over and then I, as he was, he was doing research and then like letting me know like what mm -hmm. he felt like I was good to know. Um, and apparently a cyst in the pineal gland, it is uh, like a one to 5% of the population have them. So it's like, that's small, but when you really think about mm -hmm. it, it's actually like a good amount. Mm -hmm. um, and they're almost, almost always are always benign. So that obviously like really soothed me. Um, sometimes you need to get them surgically removed though. And then that freaked me out. Cause I was like, am I going to need brain surgery? Mm -hmm. Um, and then he started reading up on it more and, um, 
most people find them in their 20s to 30s because they go in to get a CT scan for a different head injury. Isn't that wild? And then they find And then they out. find it. And so then I was like, still freaking out. And he, it's really, they haven't done like a ton of research from what I found, but, um, and they're not quite sure what causes them, but from some studies, they believe that they are formed from hormone imbalances. So then that broke me. I sobbed, 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 because yet again, my hormones fucked me up in another way. I'm like a fucking brain cyst. Like, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? So I wasn't doing too well. And then, um, yeah, that's kind of where I'm at now. <laughs> Your crotch. <gasps> crotch? <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, yes, yes, yes. Well, yeah, yeah. So that was my brain situation. Um, I mean, I don't really but have you're, an you're update scheduled. since then. I, schedule, I have to go get an MRI. I'll keep everyone updated. But again, I am trying to stay positive here. And I was really bummed that day, that night. Cal felt really badly for me, obviously. So he's like, we're going out. We're going to go on a date. So he took me to dinner, took me for ice cream. It was really nice. And um, I was telling him, I was like, it's, it was July 30th at this point. So I was like, it's fine. It's fine. Like w- w- August is almost here. <laughs> I just have to get through this month. And I know it's going to be the best month ever. I just, I just know it. Like it has to be. And that's how I always handle things that have gone on in my life since I was a, like a child. Like when I have a bad day, I'd always tell myself, it's fine. Just get to tomorrow. Just get to tomorrow. Mm-hmm. And that's what I've been telling myself for two and a half weeks. And I'm like, it's fine. Just get, just to, tomorrow. get to tomorrow. And then my dog died. And then I got a cyst in my brain. And then my brother got cancer. But um, I told myself, it's fine. Just get to August. It's fine. Little did I remember. July has 31 days. <laughs> the next morning I woke up, pipe burst at my house. <laughs> I had to laugh. You got to laugh sometimes. And um, luckily, though, it was outside the house. Like my house was flooded inside so many times. I wouldn't have I wouldn't have been surprised. But at least this time it was outside. But backstory for people who don't know. How long were you in a lawsuit over your house? Oh, I think like almost a year, right? Yeah. Something like that. So that like that's the never ending saga for you. Yeah, no, I like it doesn't it doesn't phase me anymore. But going back to my positive way of thinking, like what I said, my dog passed peacefully in her sleep. My brother could have had it in his leg. It could have been a a really, a way scarier form of cancer. Either way, obviously cancer is very scary, but like it could have been so much worse. For me, the box fell on my head, which sucked. But had that not happened, Mm -hmm. I would have never gotten this scan or it would have been a lot longer. And like, I don't know what's going to happen with this thing in my brain. I, I pray and hope that it'll either just go away or it'll stay the same size and I will never need surgery. Also, maybe it'll help knowing your hormone specific hormone imbalance knowing if it, you know what I mean like maybe there's some correlation there I I, I get the happy mindset I, I this that's what's getting me through right okay. now to be fully honest okay. I was like you know what I found it now it's very small still from the research that I've done I'll I'm going to talk to a doctor and then I'll come back and tell you guys what happens but it could have been so much worse the pipe could have burst inside my house and guess what? July's over. And it's August 1st. It's August 1st. The clippins are in. The clippins are here. <laughs> Alicia gave me a fly trapper for the flies. <laughs> Jesse brought me some sriracha today, which we all know how hard that is to find. So like my day is turning around, truly. My life is turning around. You guys, we all know nothing tastes better than a deal. I, myself, my mom, my aunt, it's true. Nothing tastes better than a deal. Mm-hmm. My friend would say that in college and it's true. Nothing is better than doing the shopping that you normally would and getting money back for literally doing nothing. For free. For free. <laughs> Rakuten is absolutely amazing. Like my mom and my aunt are obsessed with it. They are absolutely great. So basically all you have to do is just go to the Rakuten website and they are partnered with so many different stores. There's 4,200 stores to choose from. That includes fashion, beauty, electronics, home essentials, travel, dining, and so much more. The membership is free and it's easy to sign up. You go onto Rakuten and you just click the link. It takes you directly to the store's website and you do your shopping like you normally would, but because of their partnership with the brands, you get money back for doing what you were exactly going to do before. And my favorite thing is they actually have really, really good stores that I already shop at. I'm talking Macy's, Adidas, Walmart, Nike, Bloomingdale's, Levi's, Urban Outfitters, YSL Beauty, Samsung, Sephora. 
I didn't know that Kiehl's is on there. And I don't know if you know this, but Cal's Cal. a Kiehl's boy. Yes. He, whenever we go to the mall, the first stop for me is Wetzel's Pretzels. The first stop for <laughs> Cal is Kiehl's. And he always buys all his stuff there. So I'm going to start telling him to shop through Rakuten because he'll save money. Also, Rakuten has 17 million members who are already saving. And Rakuten members have saved over 4.6 billion dollars in cash back oh that could God. be you could be part of that you could be a part of that so start shopping at racketon.com or get the racketon app to start saving today your cash back really adds up but truly like in these moments i have cried a lot and i know i'm being like silly right now because as again as, as i'm saying like it's the only way i can like not cry every day um it can't get much worse she says with a smile i, just, <laughs> I was like i just don't want you to jinx it it's fine if it does like truly life I don't know like I'm I'm okay I have you guys I have my family I I just like I'm so grateful for so much still that like it's as shitty as it is and like all these things suck I think just in the span of two and a half weeks it's yeah. like it's been a lot but like spread out it could be so much worse but I and the, okay <sighs> I want I want you to be optimistic because I, I love that about you so much. <laughs> but <laughs> not the laugh. No, not the laugh. I'm sorry. As you as I was just finishing my sentence, I was like, am I numb? <laughs> I was just no, thinking that. I like I just knowing who you are, I want you like it is oh like all of those as individual things would be a, enough to take me out for a minute. Okay. <laughs> and like, you are so strong and always there for everyone else and wanting to help everyone and fix everyone. And I'm like, if this is a season of you just like focusing on you, if you need to pull back from like helping others or like being so there for, you know, your friends and your family, like that's okay, Rem. Like we want you happy. We want you good. We want you healthy. Like I, I like, I appreciate that. And like, she texted me the nicest thing the other night where I know you were just worried about me. And I am okay. Even if I have my mentee B, I'm just gonna cry and then I'm gonna feel better. And it'll be good, Are you but like crying? I am I'm crying. Because like <laughs> helping other people is what fills my cup up. Like I there's nothing I wanna do more right now than just be with my family and my friends. Like that's all I want. Like there's nothing else that I can do. I could sit at home and be sad by myself, but like why not be sad with my friends? Or I sad with my mom or my brother. I just don't want you dumbing down everything and being like, it's not, it's fine. It's fine. Because like, even, even just Shane getting his diagnosis, like that's, that's a lot. And that's your baby brother. Like, of, and yeah, I feel like he has gone fucking like just gone through so much shit that no one should have to go through. And like, I, you were just the most pure heart of a person who's like, I want to fix everything. And like, maybe that's, a lesson you're going to learn right now is like, you know what? I can't help in these situations. All of them are things I can't physically do anything, but like, I just have to sit here and trust. And like, I don't like, I just, oh, like, I want you to like, I want you to ask for help when you need it. Cause you never do. I promise I will. Okay. And I like, I feel your love for me always and especially right now like I really do and I appreciate it so much I really am okay but if you want me to be Lulu with you I'll be like oh my god everything's great <laughs> oh wait here you need the tissues too no, you're good I no I like I appreciate it so much and I appreciate like I wouldn't be able to get through this if it weren't for you guys and for my family and just being I like the positivity is the only way I can get through yeah. this truly like if I was negative and sad then I like, I just don't see a point to that. And there are times where I am yeah. and like, I need to be, I, I am such a like, look on the bright side person leading into this, this conversation that I wanted to have where I grew up in the church. And at one point, I think when I was 18, I truly felt like I was like, I can make my own decisions now. Mm -hmm. And there were so many things that I was unsure about that I felt like I had been forced to learn in church growing up. And so I think also being like 18, feeling like I was an adult, feeling like I, I like I was rebellious. I was like, I don't think I want to practice Christianity anymore. And my parents were really upset about it because they're Christians. And I think that's what they had envisioned for me. And I don't know. I just was like, I, I think I was so resentful that I like fully turned my back to it. Um, but lately, I don't know. I feel like a lot of people would feel all these things and be like upset mm -hmm. about all of it happening. And obviously it's like, I'm not upset 
because it's life. I'm sad. And this leads back to that conversation I said a few weeks ago where like, this sucks. Getting older sucks. Mm -hmm. Like I've gotten two and a half weeks older since the last time we recorded and all this happened. Like that's, Mm -hmm. I'm correlating getting older with like negative stuff happening. Days. Yeah. More days going on. And as the more days go on, more bad things happen, Mm -hmm. which maybe that's not how I should think about it, but that's maybe a way that I'm coping as well. Not me giving my own therapy session. No, (laughs) no, I was going to say though, both of us haven't really struggled with grief. Yeah. A lot of people have had to deal with it when they were four years old, seven years old, you know? So I think it's a lot of it at once because now we're older. Yeah. It's just a new feeling and a lot of it. It's like first my dog, then like, oh my God, like family member. I don't know. I think it's just a lot of, a lot. Yeah. I think I agree with that, but like going back and I don't know if this is just who I am and the way that I think I, every day I'm so grateful that I have gone 28 years without having to deal with like real, real grief. Like my dog obviously was hard, but, and I think that's why it was harder on me. It's like Mm -hmm. the first taste I've really had of it, but I'm, instead of like being upset, I'm just every day, I'm so grateful that I have my friends and my family. And I've been able to live 28 long, fulfilling, amazing years without having to deal with that. And my heart like breaks for those who have had to deal with it at a young age. Like my mom lost her mom. Like when Shane was like a couple months old, I think it was. And like, she had to go through motherhood without having a motherly figure around. And I know that was really hard. So I'm like, I'm so grateful that I have an amazing family and amazing friends. But lately I've been like thinking more about if I'm more open to Christianity again, because as shitty as all these things are, I'm still very grateful Mm -hmm. because it could be so much worse Mm -hmm. because I know Shane could have, had it in his leg. I know he could have had a different form of cancer. I know had the box not fallen, maybe I would have never found it. I just keep thinking about all these things. And I'm like, whether it's turning back to religion again, or it's my spirit guides or Mm -hmm. whatever it is that I believe and I want to believe in. And I'm a full proponent and believer that everyone should believe whatever they want to believe. Whatever it is, as shitty as what I'm going through is, I just feel like someone's still watching over me. I'm going to sob. <laughs> and I think that's like truly what that and cope and laughing is what I think is getting me through all this. Cause I am very grateful as weird as that sounds. <laughs> like, <laughs> dude, I've been praying for you lately. Oh, like, thank you. Like you, you've been on my heart a lot lately. And I'm sobbing now and it's like your episode. (laughs) (laughs) That is, you like worded that so beautifully. Thank you. And maybe your praying for me has given me that perspective. Cause I also am aware, aware, I'm like, is something wrong up here? Like that's a really weird perspective to have. And I'm aware of that. Is it the concussion? No, (laughs) the concussed, me being concussed. Truly like that. I don't know why I'm thinking that way because I know in the past I would have been very woe is me and like, oh, this sucks. But for some reason, I'm just very grateful that everything could be worse. And I still, and as we say on this podcast, like your feelings are valid and I know my feelings are valid and I know, and again, I'm not saying that like I haven't cried and I haven't been upset and I haven't felt so defeated lately. Mm -hmm. Cause again, after like, after the, the, the botched surgery for Shane, I got home and I was like, I don't think I can do much more. Then I got food poisoning. And then I was like, which was minimal on this, but I was like, damn, I guess I can handle more. I have so many thoughts (laughs) from like the beginning of everything. One, I just, I know you're like, no one, you said it earlier, like, oh, I won't go into it because no one can, like people care. People really care. People love Shane on the pod. People love Shane. (laughs) And I know like, I don't know. So that's just something I have to say, but going to the Christianity thing, I think that's also such a weird thing, especially for people who grew up with it or any religion. When you grow up with a religion that you feel like you're supposed to do or your parents have, it's like, I truly, truly believe like everyone has to figure it out for themselves. Yeah. And it's not up to your parents. And I I think a lot of parents look down on themselves, like, where did we go wrong? Like we should have done this different or whatever. And it's like, it's not about, like, it's truly everyone's own journey. And if they want to be spiritual, if they want to go to Christianity or a different religion or whatever. Like it's all like, if we believe there's a God or someone orchestrating everything who made the fucking world, why do we feel like he couldn't 
have each of us find him in our own time. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Like, I feel like I'm even in a like, let's question shit. Like, okay. I remember hearing all this growing up. Well, where the fuck does it say that? And Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't agree with that. So like, let's dig into it more. And I think like just being open to like anything. And I think also like a lot of people have been scarred so much from it. It's like, okay, what, what do I believe in? Whether it's Christianity or whatever religion or God, or, or maybe it's the universe. It's like, everyone has to, at some point, believe what they believe about anything, you know, whether it's heaven, hell, afterlife, you know, um, reincarnation reincarnation Mm -hmm. like at some point we all have to come to a moment where like wow like what do i think and it's okay for people to disagree or whatever but it is weird getting older when you start having more incidences where you're like wow like the world isn't perfect um life is short what do i think about all of this what do i think about life and my purpose and i saw um me i started this article no bitch you saw tiktok (laughs) you saw tiktok or a reel whatever and it was talking about our purpose and how all of us struggle so much, especially when you, when you talk to anyone, honestly, they're always like, I just feel like I'm meant for more. Like, I feel like I have a bigger purpose in my life. Like, what's my purpose? What's my purpose? And it's such this big overarching theme that we see in all of our lives of people trying to find their purpose. And basically this video was explaining how our purpose is what we're presented each day. Like, Today, maybe it's you sharing all this on the pod. Tomorrow, maybe it's you being like, wow, I'm gonna call Shane and talk to him for two hours. Like bringing it back to like such simple things versus trying to see our whole life at once. Yeah. In reality, we've talked about this too. Like depression's in the past, anxiety's in the future. Like just like focusing on today and being present. And like that goes into like being intentional. And lately that's kind of been a, I think one thing that when I was deep down depressed, I was like, I didn't see a purpose for each day and like thinking of it truly as like, what if this was your last day or just like, what, who am I around today? Like, who can I, you know, ask about their life or like, then just get out of your head. And have you seen those photos? That's like, here's the universe. And here's you worrying about in the shower, worrying about whatever. Yeah, It's like, it's so true. It's like, dude, we're like, like seeing what's presented to you each day and just going with the flow. And like, we don't need to know tomorrow. We don't need to know the outcome of any of the cancer of this sis. Like all we know is, today you know yeah I think in some way I've been doing that way of thinking like I truly am just trying to get through the day each day now Mm. without something happening without getting a phone call like I would love to just get through the day without having something that I need to worry about something extra added to my plate and if it happens I can handle it yeah I will be able to handle it I'd rather not yeah I'm, I'm, I'm getting tapped out but I every day. I'm just like, I just need to get through it. I'm going to get through it. I'm going to get through it because I think if I do take a step back and I think about like, I'm already kind of worried, obviously about this MRI that I have to do now. Mm -hmm. And in my soul, my heart, I know I probably am going to be okay. But when I let those fears start to wander in my brain, that's when I freak out, but that's not for another week. Mm -hmm. So why stress about it now? If I can't control it, not the, the fact that I literally went to Bible college or like, it's so, I should know this fucking verse, but it's like, don't worry about tomorrow because tomorrow will worry about itself. Someone's going to put it in the thing, but that's a Bible verse that like I fucking memorized in third grade and like, can't even tell you where it's from. But even that mentality, and I think there are a lot of, whether again, you believe in the Bible or God or whatever, it's like, there are a lot of like truths to that. You mm-hmm. know, it's like, worry about tomorrow. You're here. I think that's so beautiful. Like how you worded that. And even it being full circle of like, I mean, I feel like even in the beginning, I'm like, no, Remy, like everything you're going through is so hard. And you'd be like, no, but like, I'm okay. And I think that like speaks volumes more than anything. Thank you. Like it really, I don't know. Someone out there is looking out for my family. Someone, some person, something. I'll find them. Yeah. <laughs> well, I just want to say thank you to them because it could be worse. Damn. I want to be like Remy when I grow up. <laughs> I'm being dead ass. <laughs> I mean- I'm just like, it could have, it really could have been so much worse. If it had been a brain tumor, I don't think I'd be sitting here as grateful, but you still have to find the positives in it. Also, last thing, when you think of something in the past that was like the worst thing you ever went through and when you go through it and you're on the other side, you're like, wow, I made it. Yeah. And you never thought you'd be able to go through it, whether it's a breakup, whether it's, you know, um, health a relationship, health, con- yeah. whatever it is. And it, it's so true. Like the more you go through, the more 
not only you can help other people with it because you've experienced it, but the more confidence you get with yourself of like, wow, I was able to get through that. What else can I get through? You know what I mean? And that's part of the part of life, the beautiful feeling of life. I also, I think I said this on the pod once, but I also saw a TikTok, <laughs> not an article <laughs> uh, that was saying, it was a video saying, what if we come to this life to just experience every feeling possible? I've seen that one. Yeah. Pain, happiness. I think it was, maybe it was about having a, like having a baby. And it's like, your baby's gonna experience all these things. I think even as parents, you want to shelter your baby, be like, no, like, I don't want you to get hurt. Cause I've gotten hurt and it, and it sucks. But like, if that is our it's the human experience, human experience and purpose in life is to like feel all of the feelings that we're able to feel. Um, it does make it a little easier to be like, yeah. Swallow. And to connect with people be like, I know what betrayal feels like. I know what hurt feels like. I know what loneliness and grief feel like, you know, and being able to connect that way over it, which you're doing. I know it doesn't seem like it, or you feel like, oh, people aren't, don't care. But like, truly, I know they do. Like, I know they do. Especially from you. I love you. Love you too, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Did, you see my, Did you see my TikTok? It was like, what are things that are we going to do in five years that cr- that we cringe at? And I was like, oh, well, you know how we used to go like this and we go like this. Uh-huh. Now people are going to cringe at this. Like, what's the next thing? And uh-huh. I got comments of people being like, um, hello, isn't your best friend Korean? Like, hasn't she shown you like the heart? <laughs> I was like, so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that's my bad I should have shown you no no I, I was on. actually surprised that you you threw it up with today I was like oh she knows I it. like I yeah <laughs> sorry yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, no, you're good that was my bad <laughs> what's the point of having a Korean best friend if you can't learn that everyone listening is like what are they doing they're like what the little this conversation went from here to here <laughs> literally 180 <laughs> I am so grateful for you and your support I feel like I've done shit except for like say jokes that like make me <laughs> I love I'm truly like why like I want to laugh Oh, perfect. Why I got not? You. I laughed at your joke. I told, I read it to Cal. He <laughs> loved it. He thought it was so funny. Uh, I like, I'm, I'm really so grateful for you. I'm so grateful for, I'm sure all the people that are going to comment really nice things. Thank you guys to you so much. Um, and again, this like, this is part of the human experience. Mm-hmm. Like it sucks, but I mean, how can I complain when August is going to be the best month ever? Cause August going to slip <laughs> away like a moment. She time. says, Hopefully, manically. I mean, I'll keep you guys updated with mm-hmm. uh, how everything goes. And please pray for Shane. Pray for Shane. And thanks for listening, guys. Sorry this was like a sad episode. No, I thought it was inspiring and hopeful. I, I, I feel genuine hopefulness. I feel excitement for the future. I feel grateful. And that's it. That's how I feel. And sad for Shane. But that's okay. No, seriously, I know that this helped so many people. And even just like, for instance, I feel like life's been pretty good for me lately. (laughs) (laughs) I made her laugh. (laughs) You know what, though? I'm so happy to hear. I really am so happy to hear that because that's how I felt when you were crying on the couch. And I was like. You good? So where I was, where I was really going with that, on a more serious note, was like, I think that's also interesting. How like, I don't think that's coincidence. How we flipped, we flipped. Yeah, you know, like you were there for me when I needed you, and it's like that's also a beautiful part of sad times, you know, and friendship, and friendship and shit. You I know? agree. No, I, 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 chance. It's weird. 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 You're like, I'm ready to give it back though, bitch. Yeah, I take it back. You You're should. like winding up, like, I'm gonna throw it back. And I'm like, no. No, I would love a time where we're just like both right. thriving. That'd right. be really awesome. <laughs> thank you so much. But thank you guys so much for listening and we love you so, so much. And I'll keep you updated. Love you guys. Love you guys. Bye. Bye.